Join us now for a moment of faith with Dr. Joe Arthur, pastor of the Harvest Baptist Tabernacle in Jonesboro, Georgia. This is an internet broadcast that will air daily at 12.30 p.m. and will remain on our Harvest Facebook page for you to view at any time. This broadcast is to uplift God's children and to remind us all that faith is the victory that overcometh the world. Now here's our pastor with a moment of faith, Dr. Joe Arthur. And we greet you today in that name that is above every name, the wonderful, mighty, eternal name of Jesus. Welcome to our Wednesday's edition of A Moment of Faith. We're taking a little bit of time out of each day just to see what our God can do in just a moment of faith. The Bible tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. And we've been walking through the Word of God, looking at several wonderful characters in the Bible who are a living illustration on what God can do through the principle and power of faith. Monday, we looked at David, who had warring faith. Faith gave him the ability to be a mighty warrior for God. Yesterday, we looked at Daniel and saw Daniel's withstanding faith, faith that gave him the ability to withstand the fiery darts of the wicked, gave him the ability to stand for God in the midst of a world of persecution. I want to finish out this week's broadcast, today, tomorrow, and Friday, with our dear friend, the Bible, a man that we know well, a man by the name of Job. And I want us to look at Job, and I want to use this as a phrase to describe his faith, willing faith. Job had willing faith, a faith that was willing to trust God in the time of crisis, a faith that was willing to hold to God's unchanging hand. A faith that was willing to follow the footsteps of God through the storms, through the trials, through the heartaches of his life. In fact, Job was so willing to stay with God in a world that was crumbling apart that he is referred to in the New Testament as patience, the patience of Job the stickability of Job, the determination of Job, a faith that is willing to trust God in the midst of storms, troubles, trials, and tribulations. Chapter 1 of his book were introduced to Job's trial, Job's dilemma. He walks in his storm in chapter number 1 through a series of messengers, Three different messengers come to Job and tell him about the tragedy that his family had faced. One came in and told him about his crops. One came in and told him about his livestock. The other one came in and told him about his family. And I want to make a very serious, very serious statement uh, in our introduction today. There is a difference between being negative and being truthful. There is a difference between being negative and being truthful. And I know in a situation like we're having in our country, people are looking for hope. They're looking for positive messages. But I'll remind you of something today, ladies and gentlemen. There is a difference between a message of hope and a sense of false hope. There is hope in the Bible. There is hope in the Lord. There is hope in the promises of our God. But in the midst of hope, we must realize that storms and trouble and trials, they are real. And when a man of God is telling the truth, when a man of God is giving a word of God 
that is true. That message may not be what we want to hear. It may not necessarily be the positive message that we want to hear. But there is a vast difference between a true message of hope and a sense of false hope. There is a difference between being negative and being truthful. And I want to make sure that you are aware of that in this hour. These messengers that came to Job, they were not positive messages. They were messages of hurt and destruction, but they were not false messages. They were not true, uh, they were not false messengers. They were true messages of real things that had happened in Job's life. The storm was real. The tragedy was real. The crisis was real. The disease in Job's body was real. The destruction of Job's finances was real. The death that was in Job's family was real. The deceit among his friends are real. Job is not having a bad dream. He is not having a nightmare. He is living in the midst of reality. The reality is this. It is bad. It is tough. It is hard. And Job does not try to deny. He does not try to disregard. He does not try to cast doubt on the words of the messengers. He takes it as it is. It is a real heartache. It is a real loss. It is a real battle. It is a real crisis. And to me, that's what makes the book of Job and the life of Job more pertinent and powerful and precious in my own heart. Because Job knows this is more than a bad dream. He knows this is more than a psychological state of mind. It is a real storm. It is a real trouble. It is a real trial. But here's what's so good about it. Job is real. And Job's faith is real. And Job's character is real. And Job's courage is real. Job is a real man in the midst of a real crisis. But he has real faith and a real God. And he comes out, hallelujah, on the other side, closer to God with more power of God, with more of the blessings of God, because real faith in the real God really works. And I want you to see this willing faith. In the midst of real conflict, his faith was real. And he was willing to do several things. First of all, was we'll discovered today in chapter 1 and verse 22, that he had a faith that was willing to worship God. He had a faith that was willing to worship God because he said in verse number 21, when that last messenger left his presence with that last heart-ripping, rendering news of the death of his children, the Bible said in chapter 1 and verse 21, that Job said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb. Naked shall I return to hither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Here it is now. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He couldn't understand it. He didn't even like it. He didn't enjoy it. He definitely wasn't expecting it. But in the midst of real conflict, he could say, God is right. And whatever God gives is good. And when God takes it, it's right. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Chapter 1 in verse number 20, the Bible said that Job falls down upon the ground and worshiped. He worshiped God. He honored God. He extolled God. He recognized God. He blessed and celebrated the name of God. Job, in the midst of a real crisis, had a faith that was deep enough 
to cause him to lift both hands and say, this is in God's hands. This is in God's care. And whatever God does, it'll be right. It'll be holy because he is a holy God and righteous God and eternal God and a worthy God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Wherever you're at today, you're not operating a motor vehicle and you can free your hands right now on the general principle that God is great and God is good and God is holy. You ought to just lift your hands and say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, glory to God. Whether we feel like it or not, he's still God. Whether we understand it or not, he's still God. Job's faith was willing to praise the Lord in the time of difficulty. There's no better time than now to praise the Lord. There's no better day than right now to say, God, you've been good to me, and I praise you, and I give you glory, and I give you honor. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. So may we turn our eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Well, glory. Praise the Lord. We enjoyed being with you today, and we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow again for a moment of faith.